Sweet Baby Inc. Now this consultant company has been all over the internet in the past couple of weeks because of controversy involving them and the games that they are involved with. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about that and at least try and explain the controversy and give my opinion on it. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Zemore, the dad in DPS, and today, as I said, we're talking about Sweet Baby Inc. Now, they have been involved with some of the very big games that have been going on recently. We've got God of War 2, Alan Wake 2, um, Spider-Man 2, and the now infamous Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And what they essentially are, are a consultancy firm that speaks to developers and game companies about essentially woke morals and ideals in regards to video games whether it be through the writing the storylines um the diversity of characters in the game and the development and it's all about trying to bring inclusivity into a game and try to be culturally sensitive and just make sure that the game is fit for a modern society it got cold um so yeah uh inclusivity i think it's a great thing now what I don't quite understand is the need for a company to exist like Sweet Baby Inc. I'll be honest, I, I don't understand their function or purpose. From my perspective, from what I've read and all the things I've seen, they go in and they basically tell companies you don't have enough uh, racial diversity or LGBT representation, so you'll need to add them in here, here and here. Um, in order to not get people to be upset about these kind of things and this is seen as culturally insensitive you'll need to remove it and replace it with something else or this this is a harmful stereotype all those kind of things now i'm going to use my culture as an example of of a harmful stereotype but technically one in my case that doesn't really matter um in other cases it will matter obviously uh, but for scottish people you could have them being mean with money jumping into piles of coins like scrooge mcduck drunk stabby angry and completely unable to understand what they're saying now you put that in a game and yeah you you might get some people that are offended scottish people are more than their stereotype as are anybody anybody is more than the stereotype of which their group is attributed to um, but the problem with that being is that if you're putting in like really bad bigoted stereotypes into a video game, I don't think going in and telling them it's a problem solves the core issue that the person who made it and the group of people who thought it was okay are intrinsically racist or bigoted in general because they think that sort of language or that sort of thing is okay. But contrary to that, I think certain things need to be put into games if you for example had a game that was a very story driven game set around the civil war and you had a prominent main black character and he's not experiencing racism then you're being historically inaccurate and giving a discredit to people of black origins because you're basically saying this didn't happen so i i think there's a time and a place for this sort of thing i don't think racism is a good thing but historically it is a thing that happened and needs to be highlighted in a game that is set in the period where it would have been the same goes for inputting characters in situations where they don't rightfully belong like you've got vikings but they're all black for example that doesn't work they're there might have been a black guy in, in Viking times in Viking villages, but at the same time, there wouldn't have been a lot of them because that is just the nature of those kind of things. Historically, I don't really know, but the reality is Vikings were typically Germanic origin, white. They came over to the UK and did a lot of nasty things. And that's why a lot of us are descended from Vikings. But this is the kind of thing where you put in things in places where they don't naturally belong or are not relevant to the story seems a bit strange. The one thing that I can think of is in the recent Suicide Squad game, we had Floyd Lawton. Now, the Suicide Squad game was meant to be a continuation from the Arkham series of games. And Floyd Lawton, in the original Arkham series of games, was a white man. Now in the Suicide Squad, he's a black guy and they use some sort of like he changed well he's he's the real 
Floyd Lawton, he's the real Deadshot. The other guy was a copycat. And it's a bit strange because you don't need Deadshot in the game. It doesn't. It didn't need to be Deadshot. For example, there is a, a very prominent black character that was in the recent Suicide Squad movie, Bloodsport, that was played by Idris Elba. You could have had him. Literally could have had him. He is an actually black character not, uh, normally that fills that same niche. And he would have a degree of relevancy because he was in the recent movie. But they just didn't do that. They just made some weird story and inserted a character that they knew was popular and known and then just changed them. And I, I don't agree with that sort of thing. I think if you're going to add a black character, add a black character. Don't, like, gen well, don't gender swap or change the, the freaking... Like, if they made Harley Quinn a man, what, what do you think would have happened? Like, genuinely. If they made Harley Quinn a man, what do you think would have happened? People would have had a similar baffled reaction of, why is Harley Quinn a man suddenly? Like, it, it's just, like, completely out of pocket and weird. And this is why I don't think a company like this makes sense. If you're putting things into a story and a game that narratively doesn't make sense, then they've fundamentally failed at their first hurdle. They've fundamentally failed at their first thing. They've fucked with the narrative and the story. And it's a minor thing. It is a minor thing. And why do people care? Because people get attached to these characters. It's the same reason people have lost their shit when Harley Quinn in that game kills Batman. Spoiler. Um, it's it's like people lost their shit at it because it was something like they get attached to characters. So when you do these kind of things, it just ruins the the feeling. It ruins the immersion of games. And fundamentally they've then failed at something they're doing in general now there is a myriad of different things that people are accrediting to them like for example in um spider-man 2 they are saying that they are you know they made characters uglier and added in woke kind of things that don't really fit the narrative um and save the justice league obviously they they changed things in the story that didn't make sense and were a bit out of pocket again floyd lawton it doesn't make sense to me that I, you can add in blood sport you can add in black manta it doesn't really make sense why they've just randomly made a character that was white black in a series that already has a bunch of games that establish these way <laughs> it's very strange just very strange um but there is also the fact that their ceo has said some things that has garnered a chunk of attention. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for, when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. Now, Obviously, in isolation, this clip is quite bad. It is very manipulative, insidious, and it's clearly going behind the backs of the people involved in creating the game and then using the people involved in the finances to put pressure on them to change things in the way that this consultancy company wants and not in the direction that the game developers want. So I feel like, yeah, that even if you had full context of whatever the rest of this clip would have had, I don't think you can defend it. I think anybody that defends them is a little bit naive because they're deliberately using tactics to get what they want regardless of what the people developing the game is. And when it comes to that, they should be giving advice. They shouldn't be forcing their changes. This is the problem. They shouldn't be forcing it. They should be giving advice. And if they don't take that advice, they go, well, we gave you that advice and if things blow up in your face, then you know, we've proven that our advice is great. But that's not the case. And it reminds me of, like, used car salesmen and the volcano insurance scene from Family Guy. Come on, it never rains in Rhode Island? Well, yeah, but I'm pretty sure we've never had a volcano either. They're trying to sell you something that you don't want and probably, in all cases, don't need. And I don't think Sweet Baby Inc. is relevant to the gaming industry. I don't think they're necessary. Because when it comes to video games, my primary question is, is the game good? 
is it fun? Is the game good? When I play a game, is it is the gameplay fun? Can I use mechanics to do crazy things? Well, I feel powerful. Is the game good? Is it feel good to play it? And then when it comes to main character story, all that kind of thing. If the main character is a black transgender lesbian, for example, like to give you a, a combination, um, is it relevant to the story? It's not? Okay. Is the game good? <laughs> is, is it relevant to the story? Yes. Right. Make me feel something for this character. Make me like them. Make me, make me sympathize with them. Make me understand them. Make the story good if it's relevant to the story. Make it compelling. If it's not, is the game good? If they are if they are this thing, fine, don't care. It's irrelevant to my experience because it's not part of the game. It's just a thing that you've added onto the character. It's like saying, yeah, the main character's blonde. Okay. I don't care. Like I I, I genuinely don't care if the character's blonde. What's that got to do with? It? Is the game good? Is the game good? It's these minor kind of things that I don't understand people focusing on. And I certainly don't understand like it being important if it's not relevant to the story because story driven games when story related things are related to the characters um struggles and whether that be due to their ethnicity or their gender identity if you make it compelling if you make a compelling story i will care that they are a transgender lesbian black guy no oh, black guy black person um you get my point i i will care about these things but when you just say that they are that thing i don't care i don't care because it's not relevant to the rest of the game it's just a decoration on it it's like the candles on the cake i want the cake i don't fucking give shoe shits about the candles but if it's candles that are edible i'll eat those goddamn candles um and this is this is just my general thought process i mean if you look at two recent games that I know are incredibly glorified. You've got Helldivers 2, which is doing fantastic. Now, the game is about space freaking stormtroopers going and invading planets and killing uh, life forms. That's the kind of basic narrative of it. You know, that, and the game's fun. The game is hell of a fun. And that's the thing. The story isn't a huge part of the game, People are obviously getting hyped up about, you know, spreading managed democracy through the cosmos. And it's a very satirical and, you know, tongue-in-cheek take of human imperialism. But it's a fun game. No one gives a shit about the other side for the most part. It's just a fun game and it's fun to play with your friends. Everybody loves it. It's a good game. You've got Baldur's Gate. Completely different uh, side of a coin. Very story-driven game. Massive cast of colourful characters. Loads of choices you can make. Loads of diversity and um, customizability for your character. The gameplay is good. Is the game good? This is the key thing I need to stress. Sweet Baby Inc. does not matter. Because unless they are somehow fucking up the development of a game to make it a shit game to begin with, whether that be for the gameplay or completely tanking the story, their contributions are, to an extent, irrelevant. I mean, I focused on the Floyd Lawton thing. That has no direct impact on the game other than it's a bit of a shit kind of retcon. It's like, why is he black? Oh, because the other guy was an imposter why they, they don't have an answer for that there's no like that it breaks the immersion for people and some people will hyper focus and fixate on these kind of things myself included because i'm like why though i want to know why because it doesn't make sense but if the game is good then you overlook little things you overlook bugs you overlook little story things and little changes and little retcons and things like that. you're gonna eh grand scheme of things great game but is the game good? Make good games, you will sell games. People love a good game, regardless of any gender politics or race politics. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. And what Sweet Baby does, doesn't matter. I just feel like they're a very irrelevant company that's got a lot of publicity. Um, and granted, you're entitled to not like them. You're entitled to not want to play games that they've been involved in. That is absolutely 100% the 
in your wheelhouse. And moreover, the fact that there's a Steam curator group called um, Steam Baby Ink Detect, where they're compiling a list of the games that Sweet Baby have been involved in. And they're absolutely free to do that. And Sweet Baby are free to be annoyed at that. Like, you can't be angry at people for not liking you. Well, you can. But you can't do anything about it. And I very much just feel like they're irrelevant. They're a very irrelevant company that's got a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of, they're getting a lot of credit for bad things happening when the reality is I don't think they've made a fucking difference whatsoever. I think they've just taken game companies' money and kind of went, ha ha! Uh, but that's my opinion on it. I mean, if, if you disagree, definitely leave a comment down below. If you agree, leave a comment below. I want to hear you guys' opinion because when it comes to things like this, I don't think you advance the conversation by not listening to other people and not understanding their perspectives on it. I just feel like this is a situation that's blown up quite a bit and people are giving this company more credit than they're due. Like, as if they, they have a Machiavellian organisation that's like, ha 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 ha, we shall make the entire world woke like us. <laughs> And then, as a result, all games are shit. Um, I just don't think they have that level of intelligence or power. I think they are just people trying to sell their company and their ideals, and people just don't like it. And that's fine. It's absolutely fine. Either way, don't forget to like, leave a like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.